ketogenic diet kills the metabolism. Is this true? Really um, great question. When I did it, I felt great, lost fat, and kept muscle. Great question. So, first of all, Andy, I'm jealous. Andy Barninger here has been to Italy. <laughs> uh, I grew up in California, so I'm like all about California wine. He's expanding me to uh, European Italian, wines. Yeah, to European, European wines. wines. So, um, and anyway, so so that's where that's that's good stuff. I want to go visit Italy, so you know, hopefully, I can come see you, uh, you know, this next summer. Um, but anyway. Uh, research has shown no ketogenic dieting might actually increase metabolism. Uh, ketogenic dieting, we found in, in ketones, and even exogenous ketones, seem to increase a tissue that's called brown adipose tissue. And brown adipose tissue is chock full of mitochondria, and it's thermically active, meaning it elevates your metabolism. In fact, we have some research out of Mike Roberts' lab that we've done where we found that the higher ketone levels get, the more of this thermically active tissue you build, and the less efficient you become at storing calories. Now, what will lower your metabolism, regardless of the diet, is a calorie deficit. So, you know, I think that's important to understand. Any calorie deficit will slow metabolism. The ketogenic diet in and of itself likely would augment metabolism, but definitely not slow. What is the best intermittent fast for fat loss? Ooh, this is, an awful, this is a good question. The best intermittent fast for fat loss is a really good question. There's different types of intermittent fasting. There's every other day, which basically would mean that I eat today, I fast tomorrow. There's two different types of fast on that version. One is basically you straight up fast. Two is where you have like a 500 calorie meal on those opposite days. Between the two, to lose fat but sustain muscle, I would select the modified intermittent fast where it's 500 calories in office a day. Because studies show where you fast the whole day, you lose a lot of muscle. The other fast, the problem is that when you're doing the every other day fast, it might be hard to build as much muscle on that. So there's modified fast, and that's where people will essentially do, um, some people call it the warrior diet. But what you'll do is essentially have an eight, hour, eight to nine hour feeding period you know, and then you'll have a 15 to 16 hour fasting period. Um, and then, so, so, you know, for example, you might eat, start eating at one o'clock in the afternoon and then stop at nine or 10 at night. Then you fast all the way to one in the afternoon the next day. There's another one that's four hour window to where you only eat in a four hour window. Here's what I will tell you. Anecdotally, just from like guys experimenting in the lab, um, we see that like an eight hour fast seems to be better for maintaining muscle while losing fat than that four. That four hour window is so tight that you're likely not going to optimize protein balance throughout the day. So that's why we probably recommend more like an eight hour window um, for fat loss but sustaining muscle. Um, you could do every other day, but probably if you're going to train hard every day, probably recommend doing like an eight hour. How do you kind of readapt your metabolism after it's been decreased Okay. Um, so that you don't gain body fat. How do you readapt your metabolism uh, after it's, and that's a, Andy makes a, that's a great term. You know, a lot of times we, we hear terms like, oh, my, my metabolism's been damaged, right? Um, Andy made the great point. No, your metabolism has adapted. If it was damaged, you couldn't adapt. So when your metabolism lowers, there's several reasons why. One, you lose body mass. Like if I lose a lot of body, even fat tissue is metabolically active, right? So if I've lost tissue, I don't have as much tissue to feed. So say originally you're, you're, you, you, could, you could use 3,000 calories a day and maintain at the end of your diet, you're like, um, you were dieting down to 2,100. Because you've lost a lot of mass, my advice is, don't slowly go back up. Because the longer you're in a calorie deficit, the worse off it's gonna be. Yeah, you'll go, oh my God, I'm staying lean longer. But then you blow up. Don't do that. There's a lot of studies that show that that's not the way to go. Get back up to where you were. That means you're not gonna be 3,000 again, but if you're down to 2,000, probably go in the middle right away. See if, and, and, and stay there till you reach maintenance calories and then, you know, from there, then as you build up tissue, 
uh, as you see that, you're, that you can add calories, add in calories from there. Um, uh, you know, that's when you would slowly reintroduce calories once you hit maintenance again. So other things that you can do is raise your calories up. Two things. One, if you've been dieting a long time, protein's very hard to store as fat. So Joey Antonio's research, for example, shows that if you up protein by a high amount, you're likely not going to store fat. So uh, you can up your protein by inefficient, your calories by inefficient calories. That's protein. Finally, um, when you come out of a long diet, your body's preferentially not going to store muscle, and it'll preferentially not use fat because it wants to store fat. You might use a ketogenic diet to make yourself um, sort of adapt. So, or readapt it and get your metabolism back up. So, uh, so. And also, I, you can, some guys hit us up on Instagram too if you want to hit some of those. Yeah, that's, um, that's what I'm looking at. So, thoughts on reverse grip bench press to activate upper chest fibers more than incline bench. And we got the biomechanist over here. If, if you want to answer that question on reverse? Okay, so <laughs> William Wallace is here. Um, he's our expert on biomechanics, expert on um, neurophysiology, ridiculously mind blown <laughs> smart. So uh, when we have questions about this stuff, we go to him. So the question is, reverse grip bench, does it activate upper fats? Okay, so the quick answer, yes, it does activate the upper fats and quite a bit. Here's the problem. The motion that it gives you is more along the lines of what a closed grip would look like, where you're getting more shoulder flexion, so kind of this kind of motion. The problem is, is that when you put your shoulders, when you pronate like that, you put your shoulders in a very compromising situation, you become a little less stable. Because of that, the intensities that you're able to lift with become much lower when you use a reverse grip bench. So yes, it does activate the upper pecs quite a bit. The downside, you won't be able to lift at as high an intensity um, as you would be on an incline. So if you were lifting higher intensity on an incline, maybe you would be stimulating the fibers more with the higher intensity and not compromising your shoulders in the process. So really both work, it just depends how you want to do it. Right, right, and I think that's the point, thanks Will. Appreciate it. Huge things from Will coming up, man. Um, uh, and it's a really good point. The bottom line is that, like, if I go reverse, I can't lift his head, right? Correct. So, um, you know, so I, you might make up for with, with heavier weights. Um, okay, what do we got? Can I train fast and slow twitch fibers in the same week? You can definitely train fast and slow twitch fibers in the same week. Okay. John George is left here. But John George actually uh, did a study. We haven't we haven't published it yet, but we'll let, you guys will be the first people to really know about this. But he did mixed methods where he actually did heavy and hypertrophy in the same workout, which would be the slow and the fast fibers. And he actually found that it had better results in his study than um, than separated. So we need more. He's finishing. He's adding more people because he had seven people in the original study. So he's adding more people to see if the trend continues. But the answer is absolutely yes. How quickly should cardio be eliminated post contest? That's a really good question. Here's the thing: when we talk about cardio, we talk about high intensity cardio and low intensity cardio. My thought is that like you could pretty much eliminate the low intensity cardio right when you come out of the contest and keep the interval training in. You know what I mean? Like I think that you should have. For conditioning sake, so you don't become insulin resistant in the off season, I think that doing cardio year round is good. Now, the volume is what changes, right? So for example, a 30 second sprint on that wing gate is gonna give you a cardiovascular um, stimulus. But for a contest, you might be doing five 30 seconds. You might build yourself up to that, right? So it's the more the volume, you're gonna drop the volume probably fairly fast, you know? I drop it by like 50% right away, and maybe then the next week drop it down 30%, because so you can recover. Hit before or after resistance training? That's a really really good question. Um, train legs. Hit before uh, resist before or after resistance training. 
Here's the thing. If you were to come do this wing gate right now, and then you were to go train, you wouldn't train that well. By, by nature, because it makes you so nauseous, I don't really recommend doing it um, before you go out and train. You're going to be very too fatigued to get it done. So I, 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 do, I definitely don't recommend doing it before. Is there a new hot topic in hypertrophy? A new hot topic in hypertrophy. Um, I almost want to, I don't know, that machine can't move. Which one? Uh, the 4U bit machine uh, we just got. Yeah. Okay. So we just got a new machine. It's, it's, um, it's called 4U. It, it, um, Solar? 4U. So, the new machine. 4U fit. 4U fit. And um, after, actually, at the end of this Paris, I'll, I'll show you. And by the way, you guys who just joined us, Tag your friends, call them in, let's build the community. Um, this machine we got is, re it's sick, ridiculous. Um, a, a long time ago, when I was in graduate school, you know, for me, I've always been like a smaller guy, harder to put on muscle, and, I, and I've, I've searched around the world on how to build muscle. Like, every scientist in the world you can imagine, I've like picked their brains. I've gone to Norway, to Europe, everywhere in in Europe, like Brazil, you need all around the country, read everything you can imagine, trying to look at well, how can you optimize hypertrophy? So a good friend of mine, he's actually visit, he's actually visiting up here right now, he's going back to Brazil soon, is Carlos Ugrinovich. And I said, Carlos, I said, if you've got someone who's plateaued and he's not making any gains, what would open his gains up? And he said, to be honest, you combine e stim, electrical stimulation, with lifting weights at the same time, okay? That, so basically what happens, think about it, it's like if you're getting stimulated at the same time here, and you're doing like an eccentric contraction, and your muscles, it's almost like it's cramping, and you're pulling the cramp out, okay? Because it's being stimulated. You literally will get muscle damage as if you just started training again. I'm gonna put a disclaimer on there, okay? I'm gonna say, see your doctor, don't take advice of that, your doctor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just telling you something that's very interesting. But I'm telling you right now, in the literature, I've seen more muscle damage with that than I've ever seen anywhere in trained people. And so we think that, you can, that for the 4U Fit, we have a full body suit. And basically, we can turn on, we can target your delt, your chest, your abs, your back. And while you're training with weight, with a normal suit, you're getting stimulated at the same time. Robust, drastic, ridiculous hypertrophy. Good question. Are MCTs muscle sparing? M MCTs, okay, uh, convert to ketones. And there's good data to suggest from Steve Finney and others that ketones might spare lean mass. So they very well could be. It's not definitive but there's certainly evidence pointing in that direction. We got it. If you're keto adapted, how do you increase lean muscle? If you're keto adapted, how do you increase lean muscle? You train hard. I mean, to be quite honest with you, um, uh, we found in our laboratory, we got a paper that was accepted in Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. When you train the same way as when you're in carbs, you gain just as much muscle. We have a paper in Journal of Applied Physiology, one of the top journals in the world. We do it with Mike Roberts. Protein synthesis was the same when you re resistance train on keto as not keto. So all the same things you normally do. Um, you know, just train hard, optimize your protein intake, and you'll be fine. Cyclic keto on a bulking diet when you're trying to bulk. When you do cyclic keto and you're dieting, we did a study, we found you lost muscle because you never keto adapted. If you do a bulking, I don't know. Um, I don't think you lose muscle. I don't think you'd adapt though. So, we need more cyclic studies. We did one on, on the, yeah, I think you get that. I think it'd be kind of like a Western diet. Like, I think it's almost like a Western diet. In sense. So, high fat protein. Maybe targeted, targeted keto, right? So.